Hello everyone, my name is Jason Grierson, and this video is going to be an introduction to the matrix of linear transformations. The two main goals of this video are first to learn when and how we can take a linear transformation and represent it as matrix multiplication. And then two, we're going to look at some common transformations graphically in R2. So the first question was, when can I represent a transformation as matrix multiplication? And so the notation I'm going to use here is t of x equals a times x. So when can I input a vector into my transformation? And the result will be just the same as multiplying that by some matrix. And the answer is whenever t is a linear mapping from Rn to Rm. So the key idea is that the transformation must be linear. So once we establish that our transformation is linear, how then do we create this matrix A? Well, we'll start out by looking at the transformation. I'm going to take the transformation of some vector x. Now I'm going to rewrite that as the transformation of some identity matrix times the vector x. And this is a n by n identity matrix. And so first of all, why can I do that? Well, I have my vector x, x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. And the identity matrix is just a giant matrix with n columns and n rows where the first column has a 1 in the first position and zeros in the rest. And the second column has a 0 in every position other than the second position, and there there's a 1. So it looks like this, so on and so forth, until we get to that last one where there's a 1 down in the corner. And what happens when we do this multiplication? Well, this is the identity matrix. And it's essentially acting like a 1 for matrix multiplication. If I think of the row vector method of multiplication here, my first component will be x1 times 1, and then plus 0 times a whole bunch of stuff. So that's all going to cancel out and be 0. The second row is going to be 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus a bunch of 0 times values. And so, so on and so forth down to xn. So when I take a vector and multiply by the identity matrix, I just get the vector back. So here I can see that x really is the same thing as identity times x. All right, so now we've established this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write out that matrix multiplication. So even though I know my result will be the x vector, I can express this multiplication as a linear combination of columns, in which case I would get x1 times the first column plus x2 times the second column, so on and so forth. So I'm going to give each one of these columns of the identity matrix a special name. I'm going to call them E with a subscript, subscript of the number of the columns. So that's E1 as a vector, this is E2 as a vector, so on and so forth to En as a vector. Labeling the columns as such, I can say this is really the transformation of x1 times the first column plus x2 times the second column plus so on and so forth to the last one. So this is just a linear combination of those columns. But now, because we've established that t is a linear transformation, I can apply the properties of linearity to rewrite this as x1 times t of e1 plus x2 times the transformation of e2, so on and so forth. But I see now that I just have a linear combination of these vectors, which I can express as matrix multiplication, where my matrix has columns that are just these transformed columns. So these are exactly the columns of my matrix. So once again, this is how I'm going to define my matrix A. So let's summarize these results. <clears throat> let T be a transformation from Rn to Rm, and let it be a linear transformation. Then there exists a unique matrix A, such that the transformation can be represented as multiplication by the matrix A for all x and Rn. And by construction, we can see that A is just the matrix whose columns are the transformation of the columns of the identity matrix. So that's the theorem. Now let's look at an example. So our first example, we're going to talk about the transformation that is a contraction or dilation. So this is a mapping from R2 to R2, so we can represent it graphically. And we're going to define it to be taking a vector and scaling the vector by some number r. So for instance, if I take some input of a vector, for instance, 1, 2, 
the effect of the transformation will be to multiply that vector by whatever that number r is. So that's the effect of the transformation. Now I want to represent that transformation as a matrix multiplication. So all I have to do is figure out what this proper matrix A is. And as we just found out, the columns of this matrix should be the transformation of the columns of the identity matrix. So because my transformation um, is taking inputs, the domain is R2, the identity matrix we're talking about is the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So the I that I want in this case is a 2 by 2 identity matrix, and it will look like this. So to find the columns of A, it's the transformation first of the vector 1, 0, and the second column will be the transformation of 0, 1. And so if I apply my transformation to 1, 0, in other words, I multiply that by R, I will get R, 0 is the first column. And if I multiply that second vector by R, that's applying the transformation, I will get 0, R. And so this is the matrix that represents that transformation. And of course, I can verify this by saying I, I, I took T of that vector and I got my result. And so now if I take my matrix and multiply it by that vector, will I get to the same result? And so if I do that in multiplication, I will get 1 times R plus 0 times 2. And then the second component, I will get 0 times 1 and 2 times R. And if I factor that R, that R out, I can rewrite this as R times the vector 1, 2, which of course is the same result I got in the first place. So here I have applied my construction to create the correct matrix A. Let's look at another example. This example is going to be a little more complicated. My transformation is going to be the rotation of a vector through some angle theta. So once again, to find that matrix A, all I'm going to do is see the effects of the transformation on my E1 and E2, in this case, the vector 1, 0. And my second column will be the transformation on the vector 0, 1. And so I've drawn those two vectors here. I can mark them down like this. So this is the vector 1, 0. And this is the vector 0, 1. And so if I take my transformation and rotate this vector through some angle, it will look like this. This will be the effects, this will be T of 1, 0. <clears throat> and now I have to represent the result here. Well, I've rotated some angle theta. And so now I can use trig to find the new components. This value should be cosine of theta, for instance. And the height should be sine of theta. So it looks like the transformation of 1, 0 turns into the vector cosine of theta sine of theta. And now what happens when I rotate this other vector through some angle, through some angle theta? Well, once again, I can think of that angle, and I can draw a little bit of a trig triangle here. And so I can represent this side now as sine of theta, and this height as cosine of theta which means this vector, I have to be a little bit careful here, that's negative, because it's a negative x direction, sine of theta, and then the height will be cosine of theta. So that represents the transformation of 0, 1. So that should be my second column of this matrix. And so this is the matrix multiplication that performs the action of this transformation to rotate some vector, some angle theta. Now if we look at a specific case, I can look at what happens when I rotate pi over 2, a 90 degree angle. And so in that case, the matrix would be just putting in pi over 2 for all these theta values. Well, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine is 1, so I would have negative 1 and 0 here. So this matrix should rep represent a rotation by 90 degrees. So if I draw a little grid system, maybe I look at the point 1, 2, that would be this vector. When I take that vector 1, 2, and I multiply by my matrix representing rotation by 90 degrees, the result here will be negative 2 and 1 when I do that multiplication. And if I go negative 2 and 1, I get this vector. And sure enough, that looks like I took that vector and rotated it by about 90 degrees. 
So once again, to summarize, what we've done is we've taken a transformation described in words or by some other method, and we've created the appropriate matrix needed to represent that transformation as matrix multiplication. And that concludes this video on matrix transformations.